Today I will be talking about diabetes. So what is diabetes? So diabetes is not a disease, it is a metabolic disorder which is characterized by the high levels of blood glucose. As you all know, blood glucose is the main source of energy and glucose comes from what you eat. So pancreas in the body is an organ which produces insulin which converts or pushes glucose into your cells. So there are two different types of diabetes, type 1 type 2. In type 1 diabetes, pancreas is not able to produce enough insulin, sometimes almost zero insulin. So where there is no insulin to push the insulin into the cells. In type 2 diabetes, sometimes there is abundant insulin but it is not able to add into the peripheral tissues that is called as insulin resistance. So type 1 diabetes, absolute insulin deficiency where they have to be treated only with insulin. Type 2 diabetes, insulin is there but it is not active. So it can be managed with the tablets for some time. When it will, medications are not being able to achieve reduce levels, it might need insulin at a later time. Today I will be discussing about the ABCs of diabetes. What does this A stand for? A stands for HbA1c. HbA1c is called as a glycosidic hemoglobin which tells us about the average control of your blood sugar over the last 3 months. These days as new guidelines have come, it is a HbA1c which starts, which starts as an important parameter which tells us your overall control of last 3 months. The normal target of this HbA1c is 7 or less than 7. If you are elderly age more than 70 or more and with associated comorbidities like malignancy and all, you can take it to 7.5 to 8, it has to be individualized, especially in older people. But in younger people, till 7 or between 6.57, you can have strict control of blood sugars, which will help to prevent the complications or to prevent the progression of the complications. Next, B. What does this B stand for? B means blood pressure. Blood pressure is an important parameter in all patients with diabetes, which is an important parameter which will control the complications in diabetes, like nephropathy, cardiac complications. The target blood pressure is to be neutralized in every patient's normal should be less than 130 by 80. If assorted comorbids are there like hypertension, nephropathy, proteinuria, still it can control to less than 120 80. Next parameter is C, cholesterol. So cholesterol is the one important parameter which is the most important parameter amongst all which will prevent the cardio and the serious, serious and the serious complications. So the cholesterol's form of LDL cholesterol is a bad cholesterol, HDL cholesterol is a good cholesterol. So bad cholesterol in the form of LDL should be less than 100. HDL cholesterol should be more than 40 in men, more than 15 females. Triglycerides should be less than 150 in overall populations. Irrespective of these parameters or lipid profile test, every diabetic patient after age 40 should be on minimal dose of statin. Today I will be talking about the concept of pre-diabetes. So what is diabetes? What is pre-diabetes? As all of you guys know, diabetes is fasting more than 126 mg per deciliter, post lunch more than 200 mg per deciliter. And what is the concept of pre-diabetes? When you do at 2 hours post 75 grams glucose load and chest, test if the fasting is less than 110, post lunch is less than 140, it is considered normal. If it is between 110 and 126 fasting, it is called impaired fasting glucose. If it is 140, 199, post 2 hours after 75 glucose load, it is called as impaired glucose tolerance. And what is the significance of this IFG and IGT? So they are considered to be a borderline or in, in, intermediate hyperglycemias, which are equally important as diabetes mellitus. What happens here? There is either in, decreased insulin sensitivity or increased insulin resistance. Now what do we do with this? Shall we directly jump to put medications or put them on lifestyle modifications? There is no necessity to put medications for these patients. The lifestyle modifications are the key in managing such patients. Lifestyle modifications such as good dietary modifications, weight loss, physical activity is all which is required.
to halt the progression of this impaired pre intermediate stage to a full blown diabetes. Today I will be discussing about the risk factors for diabetes and the people who are more prone to develop diabetes in future. The risk factors, there are two types of risk factors which are modifiable risk factors and non-modifiable risk factors. Non-modifiable risk factors are like age, sex and ethnicity which you can cannot control. Modifiable risk factors are like lifestyle modifications, dietary modifications, physical activity. Now we will learn who are the people who are more prone to develop diabetes in future. If you are overweight or obese, which is the most important learning issue in this community, they are more prone to develop diabetes. If you are aged of 45 years or more, then you are more prone to develop diabetes. In the, history, in the family history, there is strong family history of diabetes, the chance of you becoming diabetes is very high. In the, you have hypertension, high triglycerides and low HDL cholesterol, which is good cholesterol, the chance of you becoming diabetes is high. If you are a woman, if you had a diabetes during pregnancy or you have developed a child who is 4 kgs or more, the future chance of getting diabetes is high. Physical activity, if you are physically inactive, your overweight or obesity increases, the chance of development of diabetes increases. If you have underlying depression, the chance of diabetes becomes high. In the past, you have history of heart disease or stroke, your chance of becoming diabetes is high. If you have, especially in the females, the menstrual cycles are irregular, overweight or obesity is there, the condition is called as PCOD, the chance of becoming diabetes is high. Diabetes, so normally diabetes diabetes vyadhi lakshana ante oka manushi vibhrithanga mutham raavadam gaani daham veyadam gaani vibhrithanga aakali veyadam gaani akaranamga ye kaaram lekunda alisipothunna gaani chupu andaginchina gaani kaallo gaani chedilo gaani timiru veyadam mantalu veyadam shariram lo edaina gaayam eppudanu jarigina avi maanakodam akaranamga baru takipodam idi pradhananga sugar vyadhi lo vachhe lakshana ila lakshana vachina appudu manamu doctor ga sampradinchi parikshalu cheyinchukoni meer daram chesukovalenu in diabetes vyadhi lo chaala rakalu untayi mukhyanga type 1 type 2 type 1 anedi mana shariram lo insulin anedi hormone poorthi ga tagipothundi type 2 lo insulin hormone tagipothundochu oka sari undi adi pan cheyalekochu so type 1 diabetes anedi twandaraga oka sari varam rojulu gaani ee alakshana fast ga vachesi vallu emergency dk ani emergency lo admit ayya avakasham untayi type 2 diabetes anedi mantramu పూర్తిగా వాళ్ళకి ఏ లక్షణం ఉండకపోవచ్చు షుగర్ వాళ్ళ శరీరంలో ఉన్నా కూడా వాళ్ళకి లక్షణాలు వచ్చేటప్పటికి చాలా సంవత్సరాలు పట్టచ్చు ఒక్కోసారి అందుకనే మనము రెగ్యులర్గా ఎగ్జిక్యూటివ్ హెల్త్ చెకప్ సెంటర్ రొటీన్గా మనము సంవత్సరానికి ఒకసారి పరీక్షలు చేయించుకున్నప్పుడు అందులో బయటపడే అవకాశాలు ఉంటాయి మరి ఇంకొకసారి వాళ్ళకి ఏదైనా కాంప్లికేషన్ వచ్చినప్పుడు అంటే హార్ట్ ఫాలం వచ్చినా కూడా స్ట్రోక్ వచ్చినా కూడా ఇన్ఫెక్షన్స్ తగ్గకపోవడంలో అప్పుడు పరీక్షలు చేసినప్పుడు షుగర్ వ్యాధి బయటపడే అవకాశం ఉంటుంది